hello, hello, what up, what up, what up, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, the Arcade Cabinet Podcast by Gamers for Gamers, we got Bill, Bill Tindo, we got Sharon the Artist, and we also have Fiery Fox here on the Arcade Cabinet, we are the Arcade Cabinet crew. Um, before we begin, I'd like to uh, give a special announcement, and uh, next year the Arcade Cabinet will be on this editorial list. Uh, Deeper Than Music podcast, our sister podcast made number 18 for the New York Weekly and LA Weekly Times of the top 50 podcast radio shows around the world. Anyways, so with that, much further ado, Bill Tindo, what, what do we got today, buddy? All right, first before I kick us off, I'm going to say the guy that was just speaking is Mokivius Furious. Nice, because the uh-huh. dude did not introduce himself. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so today our subject, uh, we're going to talk about video game mysteries, which can be a mystery in real life about a video game, or a mystery in a video game, or urban legends and secrets. And uh, personally, I wanted to talk about Kill Switch. Um, I always thought found the concept of Kill Switch interesting. Um, I heard about it when I was probably in my early 20s, and it was like a MS-DOS type game, I believe, and the big mystery surrounding this game is that nobody has it, and you can't have it, because it was a very limited release to a couple thousand copies, it was on a floppy disk, Um, you played as one of two characters, which was either Ghast, which was like a ghost slash demon, or Porta, a little girl, and you were in a coal mine, and your object was to get out of the coal mine. Now, obviously, Ghast, as the demon ghost, was very powerful. He could blow fireballs and stuff like that, but he was invisible, so you never knew really where you were. So, from all the reports of people that have actually played and finished the game, no one ever finished it as Ghast, because you got lost, you had a lot of problems, uh, because he was invisible. Um, The main object of the game was spent trying to get out of this coal mine, and there were poison gases that made Porta grow and shrink. There were uh, monsters to stop her along the way, which were like possessed coal miners. Um, So the really interesting thing about this game, and that makes it a, a, a video game mystery to me, is when you made it outside. Uh, It gives you a prompt and it says, finally, you made it or something like that. And the screen goes completely white as you leave the coal mine to symbolize the daylight outside, the sunshine, because the whole game is played in a dark coal mine. And as soon as that happens, that's it. The game is over. Not only is the game over, but you completed it and it completely erases itself from your computer and from the disc that it was on. Wow. So it was a limited release game. And once you finished it, it deleted itself. So years go by and people have heard about this game and it gets around as a really big urban legend. And um, there was uh, an auction. Probably, this is probably like uh, eight to 10 years ago, really when the internet was starting to pick up speed, uh, YouTube and everything was really starting to break loose. There was an auction of an unused copy of this game, and it was bought by a Japanese guy named Yamamoto, and he promised to upload gameplay footage, which he never did. The only video he ever uploaded after he bought the game was him sitting in a room crying, talking about the game messed him up. And that was it. That That's pretty much all that's known about the game. Um, I, I personally find it extremely intriguing, the idea of a game that not only deletes itself, but it alters what it actually is. And I think like certain parts of that have been carried on into mo- some modern games. Um, if you enter too many cheat codes in uh, Banjo-Kazooie for Nintendo 64, they... It erases your save file. The witch on the screen, Gruntilda, wow. tells you, don't enter any more cheat codes or you're going to be punished. 
and she does. If you enter too many cheat codes in the sandcastle, she deletes your save file. So if you don't finish the game from there on out, you're screwed. Um, wow. Then you have like Underta- Undertale, which is a very popular game. Um, Undertale, you play through the whole thing. It's very retro style. It's an indie game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the issue with Undertale is you have interactions along the way with monsters. If you can resolve these interactions peacefully, however, say you opt for standard video game behavior, which is the su- the genocide run. You're killing every monster. The game remembers. You get a shitty ending. The game knows what you did. And if you delete the game and reinstall it, you can never get the good ending. The stain of what you did is always on you. So it's permanent. Wow. So it's permanent. Wow. That's crazy. You know, I don't I don't know a lot about like the, the video game game era legends, but I do know that with Super Mario Bros, you know, like there's like this one part like where the turtles coming out of stage, you can keep getting the infinite one ups. Do you know yeah. that too many one-ups and you die the game will end I do know that if you get too many and you die you don't come back it says game over because I've been there you get greedy man it'll get you <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know but like with uh, Miss Pac-Man Pac-Man I guess like you know the game I don't think they, they intended for you to get as far as you do but like if you go so far like once you get to like screen 200 or 250 or something like that it's like the game just kind of glitches out. Yep, that's the final screen of uh, Pac-Man. That's a that's a thing. Half of the screen is gone and it's just all glitched up. Oh, because it and doesn't have the enough. Half that's visible is playable. So it's because of the now, memory, right? They didn't have enough memory when they built the game, as far as for the ending. Well, yeah. Also, they never expected anyone to make it that far. Mm. Right. Now, what about with Duck Hunt? I've never gone past round. I think I might have made it to like maybe round 92, 93 one day, and I missed one duck and it was over. But I don't know what happens. I've heard that once you get the screen one hundred, the game ends. I don't, I don't know. I've never made it. I don't know, but now you have me wanting to try it. <laughs> we got to, to research that. It's not easy. I've tried it. I mean, those ducks get fast at the round twenty. You almost have to have your gun right there on the screen. I mean, you only get three shots and you can't miss. Yeah, I mean, once that's over, you know, that's it. You got to start all the way back over. I did it back in the 90s, and I never did it again. I was like, I give up. That's it. I quit. But, yeah. That's, that's so, so, Fiery Fox, I understand you have a very good video game mystery. Uh, I mean, that's everything is subjective in this life. But, yeah, Pokemon. <laughs> it's funny you phrase it that way. <laughs> in this life in all right next. um yeah so, so um i figured i'd go the pokemon route because it's such a family friendly game and it's always associated with kids so a little spooky creepy pasta is always good um yeah anyone who grew up playing pokemon on nintendo game boy can remember lavender town Mm-hmm. With the Pokemon graveyard, uh, Cubone's mom is there. Kind of spooky. It, you know, really memorable music. Um, a lot of people don't know that when it was released in Japan in 1996, it was Pokemon Red and Green, I believe. Or no, yeah, and um, it was supposedly linked to a couple suicides in kids in Japan. Um, oh, man. Nothing was concretely proven, but it, there were a bunch of rumors that kids suffered from headaches, nosebleeds, insomnia, mood swings, and eventually suicide. From playing the game. Yeah. yeah. Well, wow. we, we should point out at this point that uh, when you played that particular version of Pokemon, uh, the music in the game was fairly consistent happy upbeat except for lavender town it was fairly creepy and disjointed music so it started growing this whole urban legend around well and like from what i can understand too and i don't know how accurate it is 
what they released in Japan is different than what they released in the United States. Yes, which is often which the is case. Common. Yeah, are, which is uh, common. Yeah. So it's like, oh, well, they had to change it because there were these 200 kids that committed suicide because the music drove them nuts. And it's it, yeah. it called Lavender Town Syndrome. Like, But weren't, yeah, for, the, the, for, the, I, I, for the most part, weren't go we? Go ahead, Mark. We were more cons- we were the more conservative when it came to games, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um we we have much more conservative games. We have much more even conservative box art than Japan gets. Um when it when it comes to uh the Pokemon games on the Lavender Town thing, I became aware of it probably in the early 2000s and it was referred to by the people I knew as the Lavender Town Suicides. And, you know, honestly, I'm sure there were a couple suicides completely un- unrelated to the game, but they started finding that a number of these kids actually owned the game. So it's kind of like the kid in the 80s that committed suicide and his parents saw he owned Black Sabbath albums. So he killed himself because he listened to Black Sabbath. It just kind of all dog piles onto itself for an urban legend. But oh, cause I, cause it, I was going to say, would they have a scientific, like, oh, the music or maybe, you know, we all seen with the um, the video games, like some games may cause seizures or so there was no like right. pseudo scientific explanation to it. I was going to say, like, there's also an episode of Pokemon, a, a polygon, a Porygon episode. Excuse yes, me, there is. Where that like did cause kids to have seizures because of like the rapid light change and whatnot. But like, apparently the Lavender Town song had a bunch of like high pitched notes that made people lose their nuts. I don't know. Why, why, when you say this, I think of the ring for some odd reason. <laughs> yeah. You never know, man. You never know. Wow. Uh, you know the um. I completely forgot what I was gonna say, so I'm gonna shut the hell up now. <laughs> All right. So I'll segue into my topic. So we just uh, yep. we just celebrated the nine uh, eleven. Um, so with this with this this kind of plays into it. This, this segues to what I'm gonna go into. Did you guys know that? One of the urban legends was Saddam Hussein was going to use PlayStation 2s as a weapon of mass destruction. And why I segue into 9-11 is because, yes. if you guys remember, so 9-11, 2000, 2001, but prior to that, um, we had, of course, 9999, which was the Dreamcast. Sega and, Dreamcast. And, of course, the Sega Dreamcast killer was, and the game changer as far as DVDs and video games, was the PlayStation 2. So you have to remember back at that time, PlayStation 2 was a hot item. And I remember um, when I was in the Navy, um, I went on cruise in 2000. I went on my Westpac, which was 2000. And basically what a Westpac is, you go from California all the way to Bahrain or the Arabian Gulf. And on the way, you stop to Thailand, you stop in Australia, but you stay out in the Arabian Gulf to patrol for six months and then you come back. So at this time, nobody had a PlayStation 2 in America, but a lot of my fellow shipmates, they made sure they bought it and got it modded. So the PlayStation 2 was a hot commodity, and the urban legend is, so during this time, you have the weapons of mass destruction pre um, 9-11, and at the time, it was Saddam and oh, I can't even think of his name, Osama Bin Laden. So, prior to 9-11 happening, those were the two hot guys, and uh, I guess they thought that which would have been genius at the time, if you think about it. Osama uh, or Saddam Hussein purchased thousands of PlayStation 2s, and he was going to use that as a weapon to mass destruction against us. Well, yeah, he was supposedly he was going to use the uh, hard drives and processors, uh, processors. as as uh, missile guidance systems in the missiles because it would be technically cheaper for him to buy. Thousands of PlayStation PlayStation. 2s for thousands of missiles than actually produce those things himself. Which, you know, gives an air of feasibility to that urban legend. Yeah. Because economically, it made sense for him to want to do that. And then if anybody remembers, I don't know if anybody's big on Scud missiles, 
but the missiles that they have were aren't the best. And I remember, if you guys no. remember, that um, we did that big search for West, weapons of mass destructions, and um, I don't we have as yet to find any, especially in Iraq. So, yeah, none, none at all. Um, it, this is a little interesting side note that um, the United States military of all branches, I believe it was the Air Force. Um, about 10 years ago now put together a supercomputer that they're still using this to this day that is built out of 250 PlayStation 3s. Oh, wow. Because of the pro... They're all linked together using the hard drives and processors because it was almost a full million dollars cheaper to do that than to build the uh, computer from scratch. Yeah, because they were saying... um. At the time, the PlayStation 2, the most powerful processor, that's that's pretty crazy. I didn't know that at that time. Yeah, you you should look into that with the uh, PS3. Uh, the United States military has a supercomputer built out of them. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, You know what? Here, here's something I want to bring up because of the subject that we're on. And I just want to really get this out there because... No one in the group opted to even talk about it. It is by far, absolutely, the biggest video game mystery there is. And it's Polybius. So, a real quick rundown of Polybius. You can actually see references to it in The Simpsons and Futurama, Family Guy. um, All these movies and TV shows all reference this arcade machine called Polybius. Um... Just very quickly, what it was is in mostly Portland, Oregon, Seattle area, in the late 80s, people reported this game. It was like a vector flying game Mm -hmm. um, in the that showed up in the arcades, and it was called Polybius. And um, the they said that it had a lot of flashing lights, at it, which vector games already do. Mm. Um, and the music was very intense and techno oriented and not really what you were hearing in video games at the time. Yeah. A whole lot. Do, of do, sh- do, sh- do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh. the thing is like, there were these rumors that people that played these games a lot were, having these episodes whether they be psychotic suicidal uh crazy dreams and these machines were only out for like two three months and these machines were serviced once a week no arcade machines get serviced once a week and supposedly they were serviced once a week by guys carrying briefcases that downloaded all the information off the machine and then one day, all the machines were gone. By the way, the guys that serviced the machines apparently never took a quarter. They weren't in it for the money. So there's this whole urban legend. Like, did these machines actually exist when people swear they remember playing them and stuff like that? And the other side of that is these people believe that it was a government-sanctioned deal, like CIA doing experiments on kids to see if they could control certain behaviors through video games. Hmm. I want to ask a question. Do you guys know of anybody that's had a a seizure or a bad reaction to a video game? Yes. I I do. I I have a friend that's epileptic and um, probably about 10 years ago he had a seizure playing a video game. Uh, it do, it does happen occasionally. Like Jenny was talking about with that episode of Pokemon. Uh, mm-hmm. That episode is not on any DVDs. It's not streaming anywhere. You can't find it. It's not even on the old VHS tapes. It was immediately pulled from there. I don't know if it even made it to America. But there were well over 100 kids in Japan that the afternoon that that show episode played on hit the floor with seizures because of the wow. combination of flashing lights and mm-hmm. sound. Well, really quick, like, so the thing that causes that is called photosensitivity. Mm-hmm. And, like, a lot of epileptics can be triggered by photosensitivity, but it can also just be, like, a thing. You know, that's why they have to put it as a warning. Like, I know Stranger Things has a warning about oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So 
Yeah. Stranger Things should have a warning that it sucks after the first season. Yeah. I oh. stop, stop of watching. unpopular opinions, Bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm good at unpopular opinions. So you mentioned yeah. though, and then also with that, what you mentioned with that urban legend is these all relate to like, uh, they all have similarities, like as far as the Simpsons, the family guy, what's his name? Matt. Uh, what's the creator's name? Ronan. Matt Ronan. Ronan. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all with shows that he's associated with. Well, uh, he's not associated with family, with family guy. guy. Yeah. With the exception of family guy. Well, yeah. Right, but the thing is, like, all of these shows draw very heavily from pop culture. That's true. Um, so, it, it's not a surprise to see these shows referencing something even obscure like that, because it does exist in pop, pop culture. Mm-hmm. All right, and then I got an, another one. Uh, sports athlete related, the Madden Curse. So, I guess... Um, if you're honored enough to be an athlete and be on the cover of a Madden sports game, it's a precursor to a disastrous, uh, you're going to have a disastrous year. <laughs> so that prestige, so yep. when they, and they reference, um, let's see, Drew Brees in 2011, uh, Adrian Peterson of the Vikings in 2014, and Rob Gronowski of 2017. But... Yeah. There's also players that are, have been unscathed, like Kelvin Johnson. That's true. And then uh, Tom Brady. Yeah, of course, Tom Brady in 2018. Well, you know, the the legend is, the urban legend and myth surrounding the Madden curse is that um, once you're on the cover of a Madden game, your next season is going to be absolutely horrible, probably because you got a severe injury. Uh, Drew Brees didn't get an injury, but he was like on the cover of what, 2010? Yep. Yeah. You said? So 2011 was one of his worst seasons ever. He didn't have a, 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 a injury-defining season, but at the same time, he did have a horrible season. Uh, and I think it's something like 70% of people that were on the cover of a Madden game have had some kind of serious injury. You think because the players are jealous, like, look, he's on the he's on the cover. We're gonna have to kind of rough him up a little bit. No, I, no, I but, think it's, I, I think it's because it's a game where three and four hundred pound guys smash into each other. <laughs> you're gonna get hurt, man. I know. Yeah, the odds are you, you're gonna get hurt, but you think they get a little bit extra? Like, oh, he's on the video game. Let's, let's. Uh... They, they might get a little extra. You know, the Saints are bounty hunters, man. <laughs> But that's about to say, I mean, people that play football are going to get hurt anyway. Same thing with basketball. You know, so it's like, not, not to debunk it or anything. I think it's interesting, though, you know, but yeah. I don't know. That's, I mean, all this, all this really interesting, you know. I never heard some of that, you know. I guess I never looked into it too much, but yeah, I like that. Yes, spooky. As you say, creepy pasta. Creepy pasta. Yeah. Creepy no, pasta. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, when you think yeah. about a curse, or we think about creepy pers- curses, uh, the Poltergeist curse of the cast yeah. members that happened to the Poltergeist. That's pretty scary. That's the, still, the last person that uh, died from Poltergeist was only a few years ago. He still died, but he got stabbed to death. And that was the one guy who was like in the room and he kept, he kept peeling all the skin. I remember that scene. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. They used real skeletons in that movie. You know, that was, yeah. I was about That's to say, it was, it was cheaper for them to buy skeletons from a medical school than it was to make fake ones. So they used real skeletons in Poltergeist. Come on! That was crazy, man. You know what? I'm going to tell you what. That movie scared me when I was little, when I first saw it. And I mean, it's not even, it's not even, it's not even rated R. It's not even PG-13. It doesn't have to be. I know. Man, let me let me tell y'all. I'm not going to get into this while we're on a pa- podcast. <laughs> I installed some security cameras this weekend with a buddy of mine. And they had a creepy basement that just went every way. We went through doors that we couldn't find later. We found an entire half pipe built in the basement that I took a picture sitting on. And then we couldn't find it again. But it had an eight-foot ceiling, so you couldn't use this thing. 
but they built an entire half pipe in a basement. <clears throat> it was a daycare. They had a full bar down there. Like, like a band was going to show up to play. I don't know what was going on with this place. It was so creepy and weird. And I had a number of creepy instances of hearing keys and somebody walking around. Uh-uh. Most creeped out I've ever been in my life. I don't know. You get snowed up and then get uh, murdered by an ex murderer or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm already planning on that for this winter. <laughs> when you wake up tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up on the floor of that basement and you're just going to be like, it was all a dream. <laughs> Duh. I- Hey, my buddy that was with me uh, in that basement walking around, I actually sent him a message at like midnight two days later. <clears throat> and it said, hey, Donnie, everything we were looking for in this basement is here. So many video games. Join me. <laughs> to, and then uh, the, the, the curse of the 32X and Sega CD. Everybody from Sega <laughs> lost their job. <laughs> and <I put> yeah. <laughs> Oh, they damn near crashed the company. I think we'll call this the year the curse of 2020. <laughs> oh no, it's, it's gonna it's gonna trickle down to 2021. I was actually uh, driving by my community pool, no social distancing, everybody in the pool, the ice cream man is still out here, so it's gonna carry over to 20. How much? How many more months do we have till 2021? So three, like four. Yeah. So uh, hey. So, uh, hey, which one of you guys had uh, the West Coast burning completely off of the map on your Apocalypse Bingo card? Jenny? Cool. <laughs> I <didn't> know. <laughs> oh, then we have a... Uh, do we have any more uh, any more hurricanes scheduled for the West Coast? I mean, the East Coast and the Southern Gulf Coast? Today? Well, yeah, yeah, I've got Sally hitting my way right now as we speak to the Today, tomorrow, Sally. yeah. Sally, that girl, that that yeah, that, yeah. that that. They, that. They, named her, <laughs> they named her Sally, huh? And then, uh, what is it? Uh, well, hold on. Katrina hit in September, right? So when is uh when is it over? Yeah. Thanksgiving August. is like August twenty fifth or something. August twenty okay. ninth. Yeah. Michael Jackson's birthday, August twenty ninth. Oh, okay. Do you know so, Michael Jackson's birthday off the top of your head? I'm a Michael Jackson fan for life. Like, man, I'm a fan. Of, I'm a fan of yours right now. <laughs> <laughs> so Sharon said he's gonna hunker down and, and play video games left and right. So uh, that's what Sharon's doing. While the hurricane's coming, he'll be playing video games. Hey, Sharon, what do you got? For, okay, no, what do you guys have uh, for Fiery Fox and um, Sharon? Your hurricane party video game playlist. What do you guys have? Mickey Mouse Castle, no, that Castle of Illusion. Uh, World of Illusion, I started playing that. Uh, I'm going to play that. I, I've been playing Daytona USA, Afterburner. I jump back and forth with video games. I don't, I don't, I don't really stay in one spot too long. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, and probably watch movies. I watched Mulan, the new Mulan. And, and, you know, it was pretty cool. Okay. I've been playing the new Banjo and Kazooie. Um... For hurricanes, I think it's good to play. Some- <laughs> I'm, I'm so proud of you right now. I'm so proud. Yeah, uh, I figured I'd, I'd, I'd humor the old man. That game is frustrating, bro. Like the graphics <laughs> alone, and like the gameplay, it's just irritating. I like it though. I get into it. It's great. How far you made it so far? I don't know. World. You can't tell. It doesn't tell you how far you are. You're just like moving the fuck around. You just, you just gotta tell me what world you on. It's like an. It's like a beach. And there's like a sad seal. <laughs> Treasure I, trove. Yeah, 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 yeah. You doing okay? Also, you know, back in when I played in the '90s, I had trouble playing it. It's hard. I, he said back in the 90s, baby. Go ahead, Sharon Harrington just aging himself, baby, back in the 90s. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I was born in the 90s, Kay. Look, I'm ready to get Switch. Because I just started moving some stuff to the basement where I'm going to build out my new game room. And uh, 
the first thing I brought down was my Fantastic Orange Nintendo 64. And I brought three games down there. And one of them was one I never played before. One was Mario 64, just a piddle with. And Banjo Tooie, because I'm going back to it. So you play your Banjo Tooie. I'm about to get down on Banjo Tooie. And then, uh, and shout out to the, uh, shout out to the Sony PlayStation Classic. And shout out to, uh, what is it? Crackhead. And then what's the other one? There's the Crackhead one, the Overload. Shout yeah, out. The yep, shout out to those hacks, because I, uh, never got into that game, but. Now I play it on the PlayStation Classic Mini, and I'm not gonna lie, yeah, it is the play. The playability is is kind of uh, a little bit annoying, but it is a fun game. And I'm glad y'all we've been talking about this. I gotta go back down to my car. I went to Block, not Blockbuster. Shit. Oh, Sega Genesis. Game? Sega Genesis. Yeah, I went to GameStop and I bought uh, like twenty dollars, like on a GameStop for whatever, because I got this Sega game that came out. Looks like a Virtual Racer. They came out a few days ago. I'm gonna download my PS, uh, my PS4 tonight. I forget what it's called, but All I right. mean, sorry guys, we got the three minute warning. So uh, anything anybody want to say in closing out with this awesome episode? I also want to say, um, I actually we went to the movies uh, yesterday. It's definitely a different world with COVID nineteen and social distancing scene. And I saw um, Tanet. Good movie, good movie. Denzel Washington's son does a good job. All right, check, check it out. out. Check it out. That, that actually sounds like a good idea. And uh, I've seen the trailers and it looked pretty good. So I'm glad Denzel's son's doing a good job because Will Smith's showing. Sure <laughs> <laughs> come on, you you cannot be a fan of that kid. Going through a lot. How dare you? He's a it- terrible actor. He's caught yes, up in he's it. caught up in he's in, caught up in entanglement right now, but he'll be okay. Hey, they had a Fresh Prince reunion and the first Don Viv was on it. Shout out to that. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I liked her. I thought she was great. So have they worked at their differences? I don't know. After thirty years, you, you tend to kind of forgive people after thirty nah, years. Let right? it go. Let it. Hey man. I promise you, neither one of them forgot each other in the last 30 years. They're looking at each other's Twitters like this. <laughs> oh, I didn't, speaking of which, I didn't know they had a Men in Black PlayStation game until I got that overload pack. Yeah, that game is, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> when PlayStation came out, there was all kind of games that just showed up on the scene. I mean, yep. They have a game. They have. Look, they still have games I've never heard of that just pop up. I'm like, wait, what was that a game? You know, that's not a joke. Just the other day, me and my buddy while game hunting yard selling, and uh, we came across like they had some PS1 games, and both of us are, you know, fairly knowledgeable about games. And there was like three or four PS1 games that neither one of us had ever heard of. I picked up a Nintendo 64 game the other day that neither one of us was eating even the remotely familiar with so right. like this this stuff out there man yeah I'm, I, I was being dead serious there's a lot of games that popped up on the PS1 and I'd be like what, what the hell you know but, I mean I, I think that's where the indie games the indie producers really started to come in but it, when it, it was easier to de- develop than the, than the Sega Saturn so everything oh, went yeah. oh, to the, the PlayStation this the Saturn was notoriously difficult to develop for because of the way it cross-processed and everything. Uh, like, developers still complain about the Saturn, and it's the reason that you can't go buy a good Saturn emulator right now, because that hardware is just too hard. Yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, again, Marquivis Furious Nias, you can catch me, Instagram Furiously Speaking, Nias Media, Twitter Furious also, check us out, the Arcade Cabinet Facebook page. And, uh, again, another great episode of the Arcade Cabinet where we talk about urban legends. Comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, next year, we're trying to make uh, – we want to make the top 50 of the uh, New York Weekly and LA Weekly Times uh, best podcast. So stay tuned. Anybody else? Yeah. You know, you hit me on Facebook, Sharon Art, and you can also be at on Etsy, Sharon Art Store. You know, come check it out. I got 
working on some new stuff right now, uh, getting some stuff revamped. So that's kind of where I've been with everything. And yeah, look for it. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitch. I'm I on stream. Twitch. Fire Fox 10. Watch me make ass out of myself. So make sure you watch Jenny on Twitch. Check out Sharon's art. Mark got a great podcast. I'm Bill Tendo. I don't do shit. <laughs> you can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram on the Bill Tendo. That's about it. I've been bad about posting lately, but I'm back on the horse and we're going to get that straightened out right now. And also you can check us out on the Roku channel, Nias Media channel. We have, uh, coming up, we'll have the, uh, Man, I can't even think right now, dude. The speed runs with Bill Tendo and then also the arcade cabinet. <laughs> the arcade cabinet post podcast. But you get the visual. You don't get the audio, you get the visual, so you get to see us live and direct. So again Which might be a little worse when you have to see my face. But at least you guys are good looking. <laughs> <laughs> look so ladies and gentlemen, again podcast by gamers for gamers arcade cabinet thank you for listening